my first one is um, there's a taco truck on Fair Oaks in front of a uh, in front of a um, car wash. A car, no, a car shop called Nishikawa Auto. That's my oh. step stepdad's place, by the way. But um, there's a taco truck there that's been there forever. Wait, is it the white one or the yellow one? Do you know? Because there's like there's two on. Yeah, the other one's not a good one. Okay, (laughs) (laughs) that's the one. That's the one closer to California and in front of the auto truck, and that that probably has. I mean, I I think it was ranked the top ten food trucks in in America. Okay, um, awesome. Recently, and so I, you know, whenever I I went when I was young and I went bar hopping or clubbing or whatever, um, I would go there to eat late at night. But now I go after baseball games with me and my son. We go and eat there on the way home. So you said it's on uh, near California. It's on Fair Oaks near California, yeah. Oh, oh okay. Nishikawa. Yeah, yeah I, Nishikawa I know Auto, right yeah. where that is. Because I, I know one one is supposed to be good and one is, like, I haven't been there in a long the time. One, the one in front of the auto place is the place. In front of the auto no, place. No, Nishikawa Auto. Okay. The other one is also in front of formerly Discount Tires. I don't think it's Discount Tires anymore. But, yeah, that's that's one of the best places that I go to. And, mm-hmm. and I, too, would go there, like, after, like, a club or, you know, bar. Because yeah. it's, you know, it's open. You see this crowd hanging out there and... Yeah, yeah. And they do. I mean, when the when I used to go with my stepdad, who owns it, I used to get like twenty of them because he, you know he's the owner or he's the owner of the place, and so they give it to him. But oh. that doesn't extend to when I'm there by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the name of it? Um, I don't even know the name of the truck. Oh. I just call it the taco truck. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I should know. I should have looked it up. My apologies. Um, yeah. The second place is a. Um, it's called Yama, right on uh, Main. It, it's a Japanese market and it has probably one of the best, you know, has the best sushi that you could, you could buy sashimi, you mm. could buy sushi, but it's like the best, best place. It's not a hidden seeker. Cause if you go to 11, there's like a line already. But, um, whenever I'm craving like a hand roll or whenever I'm craving a California roll or anything like that, I go there. Yeah. I love the Cal. I love the Japanese market right near our office in city of industry oh yeah uh, i forget the name of it but yeah you go you i i love to go there and buy my lunch and take it back you know the but yama, yama sushi is especially good yeah so you should go but there. that's your that's where i'm gonna go yeah go there because it's... that's on your sgv <laughs> yeah. you, you know uh i think it recently sold right like they but yes um the original owner maybe maintained or came came around still a little bit i used to go there maybe you know two, three times a week and have conversation with him. And he was, uh, he told me he never, he never opened the, or he, he left restaurant because he didn't want to deal with the customers. And he was sort of militant about like going in there, how you ordered and, and all that, right? Is that yes. your experience? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I, I see online on SGB eats on uh, Facebook that like a new, um, I think younger couple has uh, yeah. bought and it. The food's good. I, I don't think that I honestly, I may, maybe it's just me, but I, I don't feel, I don't taste the difference between the old owner and the new owner. Yeah. So it like, like, I, I think he stayed on for a while. Oh, I, I don't okay. know if he's still there or not, but yeah. Mm. Oh, it, it's, 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 it's really good. It's, it's really, you know, and it's affordable too. It's not super expensive. And where is it? It's on Las Tunas. It's next to the Jack in a box. Um, oh yeah. Mission. It's right. Mission. I think right. it's Mission in yeah. Las Tunas, I think, or Maine. Is that, yeah. that's Las Tunas already by then. It, it's, it's west of Mission, so west of Golden Deli on the north side, um, just when it starts turning from Las Tunas to Maine, like yeah. around there. Yeah. So it's right next to the Jack in the Box. It's, yeah, it's right next. It's literally two buildings from Golden Deli. Yeah. 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 It's on the same side of the street as Golden Deli. Yeah. That's so good. Oh, <laughs> I should go there on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last one is, I mean, this is not a play food place, so it's going to sound a little different, but the uh, Royal Seco Park is where I used to uh, play baseball and I still coach baseball there. And so oh, yeah. I spend way too much time in my life as a child and now as an adult, I spend way too much of my time. So when I think of what I, you know, the, my favorite places to be in the world, that would probably be one of my favorite places. Yeah, because I think they have four, uh, four fields right there. They right. have, um, well, if you include the little, pe- like the, the toddler fields and stuff, it'd be five, but the main field, they have three. Okay. Yeah. Cl- closer to the horse stalls and yeah, there's three yeah. up there. Yeah. Koji, do you do you coach your son right in baseball? Yeah, I coach little league and I coach a travel baseball team called the Pasadena Rangers. And your son plays on that. My son plays on that. Yeah. What is that like? Does it draw you closer together? Do you, do you feel at times like it makes you more, more challenging? Being a coach of your kid, there's really one like you. It, it it's it the best when you're a dad coach is that you want your kid to be the best or the worst. The best or the worst. The okay. best or the worst, because the best, then he just plays and you let him do whatever, and everyone's okay. Pretty much all the parents are okay with it. If they're the worst, then you let you play them sparingly, and everyone 
like everyone gets it because you have to play everybody. When they're um, when they're in the middle, it's the hardest because if you give a little bit extra, all the other parents are like, "Yeah, why are you giving them extra?" And the other players say that because oh, because you're the dad, it's daddy ball. And if they're if you don't give them any extra, your kid will say, "Dad, why am I not playing more? You're yeah. my dad." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. so being the best or the worst is, makes it easier. So for, you know, me and my kid, I'm, I'm much harder than any coach would be on him. Um, I'm, you know, and, and one of the challenges for me is that I have to, I have to kind of temper my working with him to make, make him a better baseball player and also work with the whole team at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't be so focused on one child that, that I can't. So, uh, you know, one of the things, eventually he's, I'm not going to coach him anymore. And so I could work with him more specifically. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I used to think I wanted to coach my children, you know, in sport and especially basketball when I was, I, I think younger and now I'm, I'm very much against it. Um, <laughs> and you sort of confirmed that for me, but I, I'm against it because, um, you can say the same thing, you know, a hundred times as a parent. And then you, you send your kid off to a coach who, who has a connection with them and, and, uh, they'll come back and tell you the same thing that you've said yes. and coach so-and-so said this. Yeah. And, and I think that's special to let them, you know, sort of develop that, uh, trust and bond with someone yeah. who's, um, at least if you tr if you trust them. But what I tell my son about those kinds of incidents is I tell him I'm on your side. The one difference between me and any other coach is I want him see I personally want to see him succeed. And that's the most important thing. Whereas, you know, when he has other coaches, he plays on other teams and he doesn't I'm not his only coach, but you know, future coaches high school or college or whatever he plays, the coach doesn't have his back all the time. You know, that's not a given. They they want to win. There's a lot of things that might not go into you know, his success. And I tell him the biggest difference in me and other coaches is that the most important thing, even beyond winning, is his success to me. And so that's the difference in terms of like coaching and stuff. But yeah, it's difficult because I'll say something and then some other coach will say something and he'll listen to the other guy more than me, right? Yeah, I get that. Though yeah. actually it's the parents though is the biggest issue. Mm. Oh yeah, hundred, that, yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of uh, coaches at all levels um, that mm -hmm. have parents. Still I mean, even high school coaches, when they talk about recruiting with, or college coaches, when they talk about recruiting with high school kids, two questions they ask, how do they practice? And what are the parents like? Because mm -hmm. even college coaches, college football coaches, biggest programs will get calls from the parents. Why isn't my kid starting? Why isn't mm -hmm. my kid doing this? Why did you take them out? Blah, blah, Even at like, you know, the biggest programs in football, they're still getting those parents calls and they don't want that, obviously. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. they don't even want to know you as a parent, right? They don't even want to, <clears throat> if you never talk to the coach, that's the best thing that possible. Sure. 